Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gautama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. Sawadee kap. Hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today is our group learning program where we come together to encourage, support, and motivate each other in our meditation practice. We will typically be doing breathing mindfulness meditation and or loving kindness meditation, and we rotate those every other Wednesday. This is part of our group learning program where we're exploring this book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. This week we're in chapter 10 and we just completed that on Sunday, but this next Sunday we'll be in chapter 11. Chapter 11 is devoted to meditation, so it's a great time to attend the program and join in where you can learn all about the various types of meditations that the Buddha taught as part of the journey to enlightenment. So on Sunday at 9 p.m. Thai time, we will be doing a talk on chapter 11. And you can download this book or you can take the file, get it printed, or you can print it through Amazon and order a a version on Amazon. And you can follow along in this program chapter by chapter. On Sundays, we do a talk on the major chapters in the book. And then on Wednesdays, we come together and do meditation and or chanting, depending on what it is that we're participating in together as a group. So I'd like to welcome all of you. Today, we're going to be doing a guided loving kindness meditation. And I've already taught a four part series where I went through and talked about the purpose of loving kindness meditation, what it's for, the benefits, how to actually do it. And then we spent four sessions actually building up our meditation practice using loving kindness meditation. And then now we're kind of starting to rotate every other Wednesday where we'll be doing loving kindness meditation. What loving kindness meditation is for is it's to antidote or transform or remedy hatred, anger, and ill will that's in the mind. This is where the mind becomes hostile and aggressive and looks to push people away and isn't interested in having polite, kind, friendly, respectful conversations or relationships. We kind of almost look out with fear and kind of look for enemies around us rather than being open and loving and kind to all beings and having personal and professional relationships that really blossom. We allow our craving, desire, attachment to produce these painful feelings where anger arises, this hatred, this ill will, and we end up pushing people out of our life and we only find ourselves being able to interact with kind of a small group of people, which really limits us in our personal and professional relationships. So by transforming this anger, hatred, and ill will out of the mind and being able to practice loving kindness, where we have this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well, including ourselves, this helps to eradicate those pollutions of mind that are holding us back from having more fulfilling relationships. This meditation also helps to eliminate any resentment that we might have or any negative self-talk in the mind. And the way that we do this meditation is we started out with breathing mindfulness meditation. You'll hear when we get started in the guided meditation that I will start with some chanting to kind of ease us into the meditation. Then we will do breathing mindfulness meditation for a period of time, but then we'll move into this loving kindness meditation where I'll be guiding you in these affirmations and we make these rings. And we'll start with, may I be peaceful or may I be safe. May I be free of all discontentedness and the suffering that it causes. These are affirmations that you repeat in the mind during the meditation 
as a way to transform it away from this hostility and aggression, this hatred or this ill will that the mind harbors and transforms it into having the feeling that all beings should be well and have this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well. In order to cultivate that in the mind for others, we need to cultivate it for ourselves first. So it would be very difficult to have loving kindness for other beings if you didn't first have loving kindness for yourself. So we start out this meditation with may I, starting with I, and we go through each of these four affirmations. Then I will typically go to this next phrase, which is may we be peaceful, may we be safe, may we be well, may we be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. And each one of those will be doing on the out breath as we exhale You'll hear me say it out loud, but you should just repeat it in the mind as an affirmation. And this we is relating to all of us who are meditating together. And then I'll go through some other rings. I usually try to make those applicable to a wide audience since multiple people will be joining us with different backgrounds and so forth. And then ultimately, you would like to get to your last ring in your meditation where it's all beings. May all beings be peaceful, safe, well, and free of discontentedness and the suffering it causes so that you don't leave anyone out. And as I mentioned, the meditation that I am doing with you guys is kind of more of a generalized meditation to be applicable to all of us. But a practitioner who's actively working to eliminate anger, hatred, and ill will should customize this for their specific needs. So if there's certain people in your life now or there are certain people in the past that you have anger, hatred, and ill will for and the mind is holding on to that, maybe even some resentment, then you should be customizing your meditation to put them into your rings. So let's just say you and your mother have a turbulent relationship. Instead of may we be peaceful, maybe what you do is you start out with may I be peaceful. You do those four and then you say may my mom be peaceful on the out breath. And then the next out breath, may my mom be safe, right? Or maybe you, you and your boss or your life partner or your children or your neighbors or one of your siblings or maybe you have a partner in the past, either a husband or wife or boyfriend, girlfriend or some friend or coworker that there's some animosity between you and them and it's never been resolved and you're just holding on to this in the mind. Those people may be in your life now or they may have already moved on and you've moved on from them. But by you harboring this hatred or anger or this ill will, it's only harming you. So what this meditation is going to help you do is release that. And of course, it's not a quick fix. You can't just do this meditation once and all your anger is gone. That's not the way the Buddhist teachings work. It's a gradual progression of gradually wearing away this harshness and this aggressiveness that anger produces. So over a long period of time, as you implement this into your life, you will see that your mind will slowly transform and instead of being hostile and angry around people you will experience this loving kindness or this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well and this is because if you do your work in meditation that then outside of meditation and daily life you should then actively work to have intentions speech and actions that emanate from loving kindness so that you're polite, kind, friendly, and respectful in all your interactions. Because what you put out is going to come back to you. So if you put out anger, hatred, ill will, hostility, aggression, argumentative speech, that's exactly what's gonna come back to you. So rather than putting out harsh speech, you transform the mind in loving kindness meditation so that as you gradually are working on that, more and more in your relationships and daily life, you'll find that it becomes easier and easier to practice things like right intention, right speech, and right action because they're emanating from this mind that has the intention of non-ill will or loving kindness and has this intention of harmlessness, not being interested in harming other beings. 
And that other part of right intention is the Buddha talks about renunciation. Renunciation is about letting go and letting things go. So if the mind is harboring any kind of hatred or anger, this is only going to harm you. So by practicing this loving kindness meditation and all the other aspects of the path, you can train the mind to let this go. So then your mind can reside peaceful, calm, serene, and content with joy as it moves closer to this enlightened mental state, no longer experiencing any discontent feelings. And loving kindness meditation is a primary practice that is important for you to be able to transform the mind in that way. We will be preceding loving kindness meditation with the breathing mindfulness meditation, where we'll be focused on the breath. And during this meditation, what we're doing is we're kind of removing any clutter from the mind. Essentially, what you're doing is you're focused on the breath. And then as you are aware of the breath in meditation, anytime you notice that the mind is not on the breath, you cut that off and let it go. So if the mind goes to the past or the future, or there's various thoughts or ideas that come to the surface of the mind, if you're developing awareness of mind and you're focusing on the breath and wherever you become aware that the mind is not on the breath, that's where you cut that off and let it go. And this is how you train the mind to then have right concentration or singleness of mind. So in this first meditation of breathing mindfulness meditation, we're cultivating right mindfulness, we're cultivating right concentration, and we're working to eliminate craving, desire, attachment, the cause of discontentedness. Because every time the mind moves to the past or the future, or it has thoughts or ideas, whatever is going on in the mind, this erroneous thoughts, this is the mind's craving, desire, attachment. It's longing with a strong eagerness. It doesn't want to be in the present moment with the breath. It's not content and peaceful to just reside in the present moment. So wherever you notice that the mind is longing and it's off the breath, that's where you yank it back. You cut that thought off and you yank it back in meditation. And then this helps you to have a better loving kindness meditation as we ease into loving kindness because your mind will not have as much clutter it'll be more focused and more concentrated you'll have more mindfulness and you'll be able to just focus on each of the affirmations and then at the end of loving kindness meditation we'll go back to breathing mindfulness for a little bit before we finish up with the chanting so I'd like to just pause here and see if there's any questions that anybody might have regarding the meditation that we're going to do together before we actually go into meditation and I guide you through it. If you're in Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you can ask your question by putting those into the comment section and our moderators will be sure your question gets asked during the class. Or in Zoom, you can electronically raise your hand and ask any questions or follow-up questions directly. Hi, man. So in some senses, the benefits of loving kindness meditation also include the benefits of breathing mindfulness meditation as well? They are two completely different meditations with unique purposes and unique benefits. But there are some things that are happening. Like if you are in breathing mindfulness meditation, you're training the mind to let go, let go, let go, let go and have this awareness of mind or mindfulness and have this concentration, which helps you in loving kindness meditation. Because in loving kindness meditation, you would like to let go of the anger, the hatred, the ill will, the hostility, the aggression, and having awareness of mind or mindfulness and having concentration to be able to focus on your loving kindness meditation will help you do that. So the breathing mindfulness meditation kind of softens up the mind a bit and allows you to let go of these harsh thoughts of aggression and hostility and allows you to instead move in this loving kindness or this genuine interest in seeing all beings be well. So you're cultivating and breathing mindfulness meditation, mindfulness and concentration. You're eradicating craving, desire, attachment. But in loving kindness meditation, you are arising loving kindness or cultivating loving kindness and you are eliminating anger, hatred and ill will. So these are two separate practices, but we can use them together 
because one benefits the other. We're working to eliminate those three poisons in the mind of craving, anger, and ignorance. So the first meditation takes care of craving, the second meditation takes care of anger, and then the ignorance or the unknowing of true reality, that gets antidoted with wisdom, which is learning the teachings, being able to independently verify them, gaining the wisdom through your independent verification to see it's true, and then using books and resources and classes and personal guidance, reaching out to a teacher to get help. More and more, you can gain the wisdom of understanding these natural laws. And part of that wisdom is, well, how do I you know, do breathing mindfulness meditation? Or how do I do loving kindness meditation? And what does breathing mindfulness meditation antidote? And what does loving kindness meditation antidote? And how would I use these? So there's all kinds of questions like that that an individual can build up their life practice with more and more wisdom to antidote that ignorance, which is the main problem in the mind that is keeping you trapped in the unenlightened state. And one of the first things you typically will learn when you're starting to learn the wisdom of the Buddhist teachings, the main problem that is causing the discontent feelings is craving, desire, attachment. And that's what we need to work on throughout our practice to eliminate discontentedness, we need to eliminate the craving, desire, attachment. And then right there next to that is that anger, hatred, and ill will that needs to be eradicated through our meditation, yes, but also through our daily practice as well. You mentioned that we may practice loving kindness meditation towards individuals who are having difficulties with it. Would we also practice it toward people that we may have positive feelings toward? Yes, you can insert those people as well to maintain and support and encourage the loving kindness. So if you remember right effort, when I taught right effort as part of this program, there's those four aspects to it. One is preventing any unwholesome mental states from arising that are not currently in the mind. The second one is any unwholesome mental states that are in the mind, you work to eliminate those. So if there's anger, hatred, ill will in the mind, that's an unwholesome mental state. You work to eliminate that. The third aspect is any wholesome mental states that are not currently in the mind, you work to arise those. You apply effort to arise those in the mind. And then the fourth aspect of right effort is any wholesome mental states that are currently in the mind, you support those, you encourage those, and you help them to grow in the mind. So if you have people that are currently in your life that you do have loving kindness for, and you'd like to support that, encourage that, and don't allow it to fade, you can include those in your meditation. And sometimes the approach that people will take is they will put those people in their meditation first in terms of their rings, because it's kind of easier to work on cultivating loving kindness for people that you already have loving kindness for. So you might start with may I, and then say your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters you have loving kindness for. Maybe those are the next couple of rings. And then maybe say your boss or your coworkers you're having trouble with. Maybe those are the challenging relationships in your life right now. And you put them as kind of like the fourth or fifth or sixth ring. And it's kind of easier to chip away at that hostility or that anger because you've already kind of cultivated the loving kindness earlier on in your meditation with individuals that you already have loving kindness for. Thank you, David. This is the other questions we have for now. All right. Well, I'd like to just invite you guys to join for meditation. If you'd like to pull up a cushion or if you're sitting in a chair, just make your lower body comfortable. I'll just kind of help you get your body and mind in the meditation and then I'll guide you throughout the meditation. So your lower body should be nice and stable, nice and comfortable. If you're on a floor, you might put a, a cushion under your rear and cross your legs, but you don't want those to be too tight because it'll cut off the circulation. So just have your legs kind of lightly crossed so that you can rest comfortably on the floor. Or if you're in a chair, you might just have your feet flat on the floor or crossed at the ankles, whatever is comfortable for you. This isn't about everyone doing it exactly the same. It's about finding what works for you and what's comfortable for the physical body. The hands and arms should be in the lap. The Buddha placed his right hand on top of his left with his thumbs together and then placed that in the lap. 
Or if that's not comfortable, you might want to just place your palms on your thighs or the knees. If you're in a chair, you might just place the arms on the armrest. At the end of setting up your body, the lower body and the hands and arms should just be comfortable and relaxed. Not real tense, but not completely luxurious either. Just comfortable and relaxed. The upper body should be nice and erect. By keeping the spine erect, this will keep the mind attentive and alert during the meditation. Because during meditation, we should be working and applying effort to train the mind. So we'd like to keep the mind attentive and alert. And the way to do that is by keeping the spine nice and erect during the meditation. Next, just close the eyes and start breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Just take some nice, natural, gradual breaths. Breathing in through the nose experiencing the full breath and out through the nose experiencing the full exhale your breathing may not sync up to the guidance that I'm providing and that's okay this is just as guidance to help you remember to breathe in nice and gradual in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Start bringing the awareness of the mind to the breath. Focus the mind and fixate it on the sound of the breath or the sensation of air moving into the nose. This is the present moment. Fixate the mind there. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in and out. Continue to fixate the mind on the breath. I'm going to do some chanting and then come back with some more guidance. You're welcome to join in with these chants if you know them. Sopatipano Makawato 
सवाक संघो संघं नमामि नपमोर साभागवतो हारतो समा सपुतासा नपमोर साभागवतो हारतो समा सपुतासा नपमोर साभागवतो हारतो समा सपुतासा इतिपिसो महाकवा हारहं समासमोतो विचाचरनं समुनो सखातो रोगावितो अनुतेरो पुरीसा दामासाति सातावा मनुसनं पुतो पाकवाति Breathing in, and out, focus the mind on the breath. Anytime you observe that the mind is not on the breath, cut that off, let it go, and come back to the breath, the present moment. You have nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. No one needs you right now. Just focus on the breath.
Continuing to breathe in through the nose. And out through the nose. When you get to your next out breath, repeat this affirmation in the mind. May I be peaceful. May I be safe. May I be well. May I be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. May we be peaceful. May we be safe. May we be well. May we be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. May all those whom I'll speak to today be peaceful. May they be safe. May 
they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness in the suffering it causes. May all those who I speak with tomorrow be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes. May all beings, wherever they reside in the world, be peaceful. May they be safe. May they be well. May they be free of all discontentedness and the suffering it causes.
breathing in. And out. Continue to focus on the breath for the rest of the meditation. Wherever you observe that the mind is not on the breath, cut that off, let it go, and come back to the breath. Breathing in. In, out.
slowly make your way out of meditation we can go ahead and open things up to any questions you guys might have about meditation or loving kindness meditation breathing mindfulness meditation this topic we just covered which is chapter 10 what is merit or going back to any of the chapters that we've been covering or any aspects of the path to enlightenment that you've run across that you would like to get thoughts or guidance on you're welcome to ask those questions in facebook youtube or zoom by putting in your comments into the comment section or in zoom you can raise your hand electronically and ask any questions or follow-up questions that you like i have a question david comma has been a big part of our list to sunday classes and it happens to be a part of a lot of our classes and i was wondering what is loving kindness meditation and, and comma how do they relate yeah, so gamma is cause and effect, action and result, the results of our decisions. So as we make decisions through craving, anger, and ignorance, those are the unwholesome roots. So it's going to produce unwholesome results. Whenever we make decisions through generosity, loving kindness, and wisdom, it's going to produce wholesome results for us. So that's why loving kindness is this exact opposite or antidote to this anger, hatred, and ill will. By making the choice to do loving kindness meditation, you're actively working to transform that anger, hatred, ill will into loving kindness. So that choice alone of just meditating is going to produce wholesome gamma because you're making a wise decision through learning these teachings and understanding what it takes in order to transform the mind, you're making this wise decision to 
decide to meditate each day and perhaps you decide to do loving kindness meditation and now because of that decision because of that action the result is that you're going to be gradually diminishing any kind of anger hatred or ill will in the mind so that's going to allow the mind to then function with skillful conduct having more loving kindness rather than this anger hatred and ill will because this anger hatred ill will is going to motivate unskillful intentions speech and actions and when you put harm out into the world it's going to cause harm so therefore it's going to come back to you but by you making the decision to do loving kindness meditation and then as you transform the mind in meditation that allows you to then practice loving kindness in daily life with your personal relationships your professional relationships anybody around you so you'll be putting out more and more loving kindness through your intention, speech, and actions, so you won't have decisions that are tainted or polluted with anger, hatred, and ill will. So this is going to produce better results for you too. So there's this sequence of events of regularly meditating, doing breathing mindfulness meditation to arise mindfulness and concentration, to eliminate craving, desire, attachment. That's going to help you to eliminate discontentedness and then by arising loving kindness in the mind and eliminating anger hatred ill will that's going to prepare the mind to then function in the world through having this loving kindness and now as you make decisions with your intention speech and actions and your relationships to do this then you'll see that the results of your decisions are culminating and accumulating into more and more healthy relationships and wholesome conduct in these decisions that you're making in that regard is just going to produce more and more of a peaceful mind because it's no longer going to be harboring anger hatred and ill will but then also more and more people around you are going to now be functioning and sharing loving kindness with you because your intention speech and actions are emanating from loving kindness what you'll notice over time is more and more people around you will also be modeling that same conduct with you and even when you run across the occasional person who's harsh or aggressive or angered you know that it's not anything that you've done because maybe for a year or two years or three years you've been meditating and you've been practicing these teachings more and more closely and you know that in that situation where you went to the cashier and you just asked can i have a straw please and they got all angry and hostile with you because you asked for a straw, you know that that's not anything that you did, that it's coming from the other person. So the mind can reside unaffected, remaining peaceful, calm, serene, and content with joy in that situation because you know that if you were hostile back, even though they were hostile to you, if you were hostile back, then it's only going to cause unwholesome results. So this loving kindness meditation is going to transform the mind so that you can reside more peaceful, calm, serene, and content with joy. And when you ultimately eliminate all of these 10 fetters, then the mind will never experience discontentedness ever again. So it's this continuous decisions, one after another after another. It's a sequence of events. And this is why I share that if you miss meditation one session, your enlightenment isn't going to be determined based on missing that one meditation session. It's going to be determined based on, okay, now that you've missed that meditation session, what do you do next? Do you give up? Do you walk away from it? Do you allow your practice to diminish and erode? Or do you keep going and you just pick it up at your next available option and you just continue to build your practice? So enlightenment is based on you know a million and one decisions that you make over a, an elongated period of time. And one of those decisions that you need to consistently make on an ongoing basis is to meditate, doing breathing mindfulness meditation and loving kindness meditation, and then practicing loving kindness in daily life and your intention, speech, and actions. So part of this is loving kindness meditation transforms the mind and then when the mind is transformed it does make it much easier to act in a wholesome way and according to the path essentially exactly you you can't just 
meditate your way to enlightenment, right? That's a big part of it. Meditating is an important part of the path to enlightenment. But if all you ever did was meditate it and then you went outside and we were harsh and aggressive and hostile to people, we wouldn't experience enlightenment because we would still be getting a lot of aggression and hostility back and our mind is still defiled. It's still polluted. It's still hostile and aggressive and harsh towards other people. We're not functioning in an enlightened way. So while meditation is there as a daily, consistent, ongoing practice to transform the mind through training the mind, it's what you do with that training in your daily life that transforms your life where now your life practice is such that you're practicing all the factors on the Eightfold Path throughout your day-to-day activities in life. Thank you, David. It seems that we have no more questions for today. All right. Well, I would like to invite all of you guys to join us this Sunday for chapter 11 in the book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment, because in this chapter, it's titled Meditation, Developing Your Practice. It's probably the longest chapter in the book. It has the most content where it goes through in detailed fashion, breathing mindfulness meditation, loving kindness meditation. It has the four positions. It talks about, you know, what do you do when there's visualization in the eyes and the mind and you see lights and colors and different things. What do you do with music and beads and sounds and things that are happening? What do you do when there's physical sensations in the body? What do you do when the mind is sleepy during meditation? All of these different aspects of meditation are covered in chapter 11 so you might decide to read that before and after or before or after class and then on sunday i will go through each aspect of that chapter helping you to build up your meditation practice so that you understand each one of these meditations that the buddha shared and how they're meant to transform your mind how you can integrate them into your life and then all the various details and aspects of meditation that you're going to need as you build up your practice. And then, of course, we'll have questions as part of that on Sunday. Next Wednesday, we'll be doing breathing mindfulness meditation together. So we'll do that as a group and we'll just focus on breathing mindfulness meditations and any questions that you guys have related to your meditation practice or any aspect of the path to enlightenment. That's what these Wednesdays are also for, is to help you get any insight or clarity into the teachings that you need as you're progressing on this path. That's an important part of your learning. And you can ask questions in the Facebook group. You can ask questions in the online classes. You can send me a private message, or you can schedule a personal discussion in order to meet personally and privately to talk about any aspects of the path or your life or relationships or challenges or your career or anything that's going on in your life that you would like assistance with. You can reach out and schedule one of those appointments. All of this is offered openly and freely to all of you guys to be able to benefit from learning the Buddhist teachings with the guidance of a teacher. So thank you all for joining for today's class. I'll see you either Sunday or Wednesday. Have a lovely rest of your day. Sawadee Thank you for listening to this podcast. To provide support for this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha. To access more teachings, visit buddhadailywisdom.com. There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice, along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.